In this series, we look at some of the more unknown things in WoW and just go over things that might not fit the theme of a specific kind of video. So let's take a look at a broken incense burner in the Jade Forest from the Mist of Pandaria cinematic. Let's travel to the northwest part of the Jade Forest. Here atop a hill, which is appropriately titled Shrine of Friendship, you will find a broken incense burner. Based on the surroundings and setting, it can be assumed this is the same incense burner that is seen in the Mist of Pandaria expansion cinematic trailer. In this cinematic, an orc rips the incense burner off to use as a weapon against a human after they're both shipwrecked. As they fight, the Pandaren monk Chan Stormstout easily takes the incense burner back from the orc and places it back on its pedestal and slightly corrects its positioning with the bamboo pole. In game, the player can right click on the incense burner to correctly straighten it. This is a nice little easter egg as it's the first time to date the player has been able to interact with something directly from a cinematic trailer. Upon straining the incense burner, the player will earn the achievement Restore Balance. The achievement's description reads, visit the Shrine of Fellowship in the Jade Forest and follow in the footsteps of Chen Stormstout. The burner eventually resets itself to a broken state, so you can wait around to click it again if you want to for some reason. It'd be awesome if Blizzard can make the mob cinematic play every time you click the incense burner. Clicking on objects to have them play a cinematic is much more interesting and engaging than choosing from a list of dialogue options for some random NPC after the end of an expansion. In the Calling of Stratholme dungeon, added in the Burning Crusade, towards the middle of the dungeon after defeating the third boss, Arthas will open up a secret passageway to allow the group to progress to the last boss of the dungeon, which is Malganus. The line Arthas says is, I'm relieved to see this old passageway still works. While certainly the Prince of Lordaeron would know several secrets about the kingdom, it is never stated how Arthas knew of this passageway. Did someone tell him? Did he find it out on his own? Did he already know about it for good reasons or nefarious reasons? However he came to know about it, it's a nice touch that keeps Arthas as a character just a bit more mysterious. The next item on our list is a quest reward from Classic called Dartle's Rod of Transformation. This item was added in patch 1.13 and became somewhat famous in vanilla. Unfortunately, Dartle's Rod of Transformation could only be obtained by Alliance players. Later on, the wand was removed entirely from the game of Cataclysm because of the zone revamp. Dartle's Rod of Transformation is from a quest called Reen's Cleansing in Ashenvale. This questline has the player help a dryad named Sheldrin who is trying to remove some of the corruption from the local fur bogs. What makes this wand so unique is, as the name implies, it can transform the player into a fur bog for 3 minutes. Originally, the wand had a limit of 5 charges, but this was changed to infinite uses later. The cast time is only 2 seconds long and it had a 1 minute cooldown, meaning you could effectively constantly keep your form as a fur bog, provided you did not mount or shapeshift or were in combat. With this wand on your hotbar, you could go around the entire zone of Ashenvale as a fur bog. Unfortunately, the wand only worked in Ashenvale for some reason. Although, we do not know if this was done intentionally or if it was caused by restrictions from the game's engine. At the end of the questline, Dartle's Water Transformation gets removed from the player's inventory. To circumvent this, many players started the quest but never completed it in order to use the wand whenever they liked. Due to its popularity, this can be considered somewhat of a prototype toy compared to the more modern uses of toys in WoW. This item was so popular, in fact, that Blizzard in essence re-added it as a toy in Cataclysm called the Stave of Fur and Claw. This actual toy, which is still in the game, pretty much does the same thing as the wand. The toy requires the player to be exalted to Timberball Hold and can be bought from the Quartermaster named Emeliosh. The toy version of Dartol's Rod of Transformation has three major downsides. First, the rep grind of Timberball Hold can be a challenge. Second, taking any damage after you use the toy will cancel the effect. Finally, the toy has a cooldown of one hour, which is way longer than the one minute cooldown in vanilla. The only silver lining with this toy compared to the old Dartol's Rod of Transformation is the Horde players could now buy the toy and use it too. The only similarities between the Stab of Fur and Claw and the Dartol's Rod of Transformation is that the Furball costumes still last for 3 minutes and they both take 2 seconds to cast. The Stave of Fur and Claw has only been altered once since the toy was added to the game in Cataclysm. At the beginning of Warlords of Draenor, the item was turned into a rare item and was added to the toy box, which was a new collection tab for toys that went live with WAD's release. The Stab of Fur and Claw currently remains much further behind than its vanilla counterpart in terms of fun and how long it lets you be a Furbog for. Of course, one way to solve this furry dilemma would be to add furbogs as an allied race. This would give us the ability to play as furbogs without need for a cooldown. Would you play as a furbog? To be honest, I know I'd probably play as one if they were added as a race. Now that we're done with furbogs, let's move on to our next item in the video. Added in Cataclysm, the Crystalline Tier of Loyalty is 100% drop from several rare elites. Only 35 rare elites in the entire game drop this trash item. It can be sold to a vendor for 25 gold. While listing all 35 would be a bit too much, it is rather interesting that most of the rare mobs that drop the Crystalline Tier of Loyalties can be found in Mount Hydral, the Molten Front, and the Twilight Highlands. Almost all of these mobs that drop the Crystalline Tier are from the 5 new zones in Cataclysm, with only a handful in old, revamped zones. The Crystalline Tier of Loyalty is one of the few pieces of trash items in the game with a detailed description. The text reads, 
the desire to serve as a loyal companion coalesced into a single priceless crystal. While happiness as a mechanic was removed from Pets and Cataclysm, this happened at a late patch, and the Crystalline Tears had been in since Cataclysm's launch. This means it is highly unlikely as a reference to happiness being removed from the game. Blizzard devs foresaw that hunters would want to tame these special, unique rare mobs, so it makes sense to feel bad when you kill a rare elite with a hunter while trying to tame it. Unfortunately, this didn't really stop anyone from killing these rares. While these rare mobs do not drop any loot, getting 25 gold for just killing a rare mob isn't something that's going to deter players from killing it. Seeing as how nothing quite like this has ever been implemented in the game again, it's no stretch to think that this little experiment failed in its goal. After all, that would also require the average WoW player to ever look at the trash item and, even worse, read the flavor text on a crystalline tier of loyalty. Now let's head to Nagrand and Outland. Here above Skysong Lake, on the northwestern part of the zone map, you can find one particular floating rock with a secret. On this floating island you will see a tree with a skeleton sitting at its base, leading up against the trunk. The skeleton has a shield on one side of him and an axe through his skull and the ground around him is littered with apples, presumably from the tree above. This is likely a reference to Isaac Newton, a famous scientist from the 17th century. While Newton contributed a lot to the fields of mathematics and science, one of the things he's best well known for is a story that says he supposedly first started thinking about the idea of gravity after an apple fell on his head while he was sitting under an apple tree. With all the floating islands and rocks in the Grand, it's clear that the Newtonian gravitational physics do not apply to the Grand. Newton's view of gravity would later be replaced by Einstein's theory of relativity, but WoW is a video game with magic and time travel, so it doesn't really matter anyway. So, if you ever wondered why there's floating rocks in the Grand, this little easter egg is trying to explain why. Quite cheekily, Blizzard killed the man who first thought of gravity as a force in order to allow the zone to have such a unique visual aesthetic. Of course, this also might be a mistake since Zerathmortis is the first ever zone with floating trees and islands, as we all know from the development preview video of Zerathmortis, which also included such exciting other things like water that you're able to walk on. Our next item is the Lorewalker's Lodestone. This item was added in Mr. Pandaria expansion and is tied to the archaeology profession. The archaeology profession got a rework in MOP, and one of the major changes to the profession was the items created through pieces of artifacts could be turned into restored artifacts which are used as a currency. The player needs to be exalted with the Lord Walkers and have one restored artifact to buy a Lord Walker's Lodestone from Tan Shin Tayo in the Seed of Knowledge in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. Now, what's so special about this item is that it allows the player to teleport to any active archaeology dig site in Pandaria. This is quite handy for getting around the continent, especially when you're farming restored artifacts. The Lord Walker's Lodestone potentially saves the trouble of having to fly across the whole continent to get to the other side where other active dig sites are. Pandaria is a big continent and takes over 10 minutes to fly from one end of the zone to the other. Like with most teleportation items, Blizzard hates fun and there are several restrictions on the Lorewalker's Lodestone. First, the cooldown Lodestone is 30 minutes. While that might not seem too bad, it usually takes less than 5 minutes to complete one dig site, so its usefulness is immediately decreased since you still have to fly to the next dig site while the Lodestone is on cooldown. Second, the Lodestone is only usable in the content of Pandaria. Finally, the Lodestone says in its description that it teleports the player to a random dig site, not one in particular. So the dig site you teleport to could be anywhere in any zone as long as it's up. This means you could use a Lodestone to end up in the same zone near where you were if there was already an active dig site there. Another aspect of the random dig site is that you cannot focus on any particular archaeology fragment type, although this can sometimes be changed using Lord Walker's map and the Manted Artifact Sonic Locator. Both of these two items are in a chest called the Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit, which costs two restored artifacts. This kit is available for purchase from the same vendor you can get the lodestone from. The Lure Walkers map randomizes your active dig sites, so you have a chance of getting a new dig site for the culture or zone you want. The Manted Artifact Sonic Locator turns all of your new active dig sites into Manted ones. It is a little strange you can only make one more of a type of dig site instead of all of them. For example, there is no equivalent for Pandaren or Mogo Artifact Sonic Locators. Additionally, the Manted Artifact Sonic Locator only lasts for 24 hours in the player's inventory. Finally, if you have more than one Lower Walker Lodestone in your inventory, they share a cooldown. The one upside to both the Lower Walker's Lodestone and the Lower Walker's map is that they both have 20 uses. This means you only need to spend one restored artifact to get 20 uses out of the item. Aside from the nitpicking, this item is very unique and it's a shame more people don't know about it. Archaeology is by far the least done secondary profession to the point where it's even just abandoned in Shadowlands. Hopefully with the revamps of professions in Dragonflight, they might finally try something new with archaeology. Next up, we have a toy called the Summer Cranial Skillet. When used, this toy puts a large bronze skillet on the player's head. The skillet acts as a campfire, meaning other players can now cook atop your head. The toy's description reads, kneel down and allow others to cook over you. The buff the players receive is called Cranial Cooktop and lasts for 5 minutes. There are two major downsides to this toy, however. First, the player is briefly stunned when they initially use a Summer Cranial Skillet. 
Second, moving or taking any action cancels the toy's effect. Because it cancels upon any player action, you cannot actually cook on yourself, which is a bit disappointing. Luckily, the toy also only has a cooldown of 10 seconds, meaning you can use it again pretty quickly. The toy was added to the game in patch 9.1.5, but didn't become available until 9.2.5, because it could only be bought during the Midsummer Fire Festival. The summer cranial skillet can be bought from any Midsummer Festival for 150 Burning Blossoms. Burning Blossoms can be acquired by doing quick little quests, honoring your respective faction's bonfire in the zone, and extinguishing the opposite faction's bonfire if your zone is contested. Each bonfire gives 5 Burning Blossoms, so you need to honor or extinguish at least 30 bonfires to get 150 Burning Blossoms for the summer cranial skillet. This is roughly all of the zones in the Eastern Kingdoms or in Kalimdor, so it might take a while to do, but not nearly as long as doing every bonfire in the game to earn the achievement of the Fires of Azeroth. The second, more unknown summer-related toy is called the Hosen Beach Ball. The rare mob this toy drops from is not Gokluck, however, but rather a Hosen named Ikik -Ik the Nimble. Ikik -Ik lies sleeping in a cave in the middle of the southern part of the zone, and he has a roughly 15% chance to drop the toy. There are several reasons why this toy is so unique and special. First is the effect itself. When the player uses the toy, they gain a buff called Beach Bum, with its text description reading, Ready for fun in the sun. This effect turns the player's weapon into a shovel, places a little bucket in the other hand, and adds a tank top and beach pants to the character. Second is the toy's buff, which actually acts as a costume, not a shapeshift or other toy effect. The beach bum buff lasts 10 minutes, and during the entire time you can still mount, engage in combat, and do most other things while using the toy. It even persists through druid transformations and shapeshifts. There is another toy that drops from a rare in the Dread Waste, called Gawklock Shell, but this toy was already covered in an unknown side of WoW video previously. We're only bringing it up here because it can be used in combination with the Hose and Beach Ball. If you use the Hose and Beach Ball, then Gawklock Shell, and then cancel Gawklock Shell, there used to be a minor bug where your character would still have the shovel and bucket, but without the armor changes. So if you ever wanted to make sand castles while waiting for a raid pool, you now know what toy to use. Alright, and that does it for this episode of the Unknown Side of WoW. If you have any suggestions for future things to cover in other episodes, please let us know down in the comments below.